Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf and this is The Joy of Coding with me, Harry Wolf. Today's installment, we're going to be playing with React's lovely hook, Use Reducer, and the lovely static language called TypeScript. Does that sound exciting? Because I am excited. Hopefully you are as well. So let's get to the code. So for today's demo, I'm going to be using some of the old code that I wrote in my Why I Love Use Reducer video. If you haven't checked it out, I encourage you to do so now because it's going to be a good building block for this video where I add TypeScript to it. In case you haven't seen the video, a very 10 second refresher. The example demo is a login page where you can type in username and password, try to log in. If you find the right username and password, then you successfully log in and then you can log out. The code itself is using use reducer for that complex state transitions. You have the login reducer, the initial state. The initial state has username and password empty, is loading false, is logged in false. You have the state being used in the UI and you have dispatch being used to update the state when you submit the form. So when you submit the form, you dispatch the login. If it's successful, you submit success, dispatch error. When you actually enter in your keyboard values, you dispatch field of field name, username, and payload, the actual payload of that field. So that's the high level overview. So for now, we're going to move this code into a new TypeScript file. So I'm literally gonna copy this entire file into a brand new .tsx file and see what happens. Uh, I get errors in the console, but my dev flow is typically to look on the right-hand side of the bar here. You can see here these little red squares, and that shows me the built-in VS Code uh, TypeScript errors as I type, which I find more valuable because it's more immersive. Um, here's the first error that I see. Uh, that E has an implicit any type. Uh, by default, I'm using Create React App with their TypeScript integration. Uh, by default, they have strict mode enabled. Strict mode enabled is more safe, is the more safe TypeScript mode. The reason why you turn strict to false is if you are gradually migrating a code base to TypeScript, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, not only easier, but also just possible. It'd be impossible without it. Um, but with this being a new project, I can start with strict true. And one of the big things that strict true does is it says that you cannot have implicit any types, which means that when TypeScript infers the type of a value, if it infers it as any, you need to tell TypeScript what it is. So in this case, I know that this is a React form event. And this makes TypeScript happy. The red square is gone. Let's scroll to the top of the page here. I can see that the login reducer is getting implicitly any types because TypeScript has no idea what this, what the values of these, what, what the types of these values are. Uh, the quick fix, even with strict on, is I could, if I wanted to be a bad, bad boy, is just say that these are actually anything. And this is fine even with strict mode on. All strict mode uh, tr true means is it can't be implied. If you say that it is, then TypeScript is not to say that you're, that you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, it'll be very happy for you to do that. So actually go here, things are working as expected. TypeScript is happy. The UI is happy. I'm not happy because I have no type safety here. So I'm going to split this down into two parts because there's two parts of use reducer. There's the state and there's the actions. So both the, the get the state and the, the write, the read the write with a dispatch. So let's focus on the state first. Uh, one of the nice things that you can do with TypeScript is I'm going to bring this to the top here and just for easier co-location is actually, I can say type login state equals type of initial state. And type of is a TypeScript operator that will get the shape of a value and then let me use it. So here it's saying that the type of login state is based upon what I've used the object as. So uh, let me actually make this go down a little bit, uh, a little bit more so you can see them side by side. 
So it's saying that username's a string, password's a string, it's loading, it's a Boolean, and these are all true. This is all very true. So what I can do then instead here is take this login state and use it here, then hit save. And again, I'm seeing no errors anywhere. Everything is good. When I use state here, I can see that this is the correct shape object. It's the same one as here. It's the shape of that object. Um, now, if I were to, now that's also the reason why it's just showing a shape is that uh, that's what the type of operator does. It's showing the object shape. If I wanted to have it be an actual unique type, I'd have to use an interface. So interface login state. And let me just quickly copy and paste this over and type eyes it. So all of these empty strings, this means that these properties are strings and these two are Boolean. So I can save that. This is a new type called login state. And when I go down here, I can see that state is login state. Now that's awesome. Uh, what's also cool is that um, one of the benefits of actually explicitly typing this. So is um, let's say we had a variant here where the login state page could also be used as the forget password page. So this log variant could be login or it could be forget password. So I'm seeing an error over here already, but I'm not really done. So I'm gonna ignore this for now. Uh, sometimes TypeScript error messages are um, really painful, but this one is actually nice. It's saying that variant um, is declared on the type, but it's not on the object. So here I can say variant is login because I'm using it as login page. Now you think that this should be working fine, but I still have an error down here for shame, for shame, for shame. Uh, essentially it's saying that type of property variant is incompatible. Uh, type of string is not assignable to type login or forget password. And you might be confused because the value is login. So of course it's assignable to login or password, but you're thinking of the actual values of the objects and not the types of the objects because the initial state here, this object is being implicitly typed for us because we didn't actually say that it was the login, the login state interface. If you look here, variance is just a string. It doesn't know that it's just that string login itself, which is why it's saying that the argument of type this, where variant is a string, which is initial state, is not assignable to the parameter of type login state. So how do you fix that? Well, you know this is a login state, so let's just say that it is a login state. And you fixed it. Uh, the quirks of, of uh, TypeScript. <laughs> So this is all happy. There's no errors anymore. This is now being nicely uh, typed. Uh, state variant equals banana is not happy because it has to be either login or forget password. So everything is nicely, strictly typed. Huzzah, we have typed the state aspect of use reducer. Let's go on to the real action. Action. So um, the Dispatch objects all have a type field, and then some also have the field name and payload field. So let's just be naive here and do the one that's most inclusive of all of them. So we can say interface uh, login action, and we can say that the type is a string, and then we had field name is a string, and payload is a string, and we can take this and move it over here. And we got a lot of red boxes here. Um, what is What could it possibly be complaining about? Well, uh, type of string is missing the following properties from type login action. It's missing the field name and payload properties. Why? Well, when we typed the login action interface, we made these required, but they're not. They're only required when the type is field. So the quick fix is to make these optional. So this fixes it by and large. I'm gonna ignore, ignore this for now. We'll come back later. Essentially just saying that this could be undefined, but we know that field name will always be present. So you can actually use a fun TypeScript operator called the exclamation mark that tells TypeScript, I know what I'm doing, don't worry about it. But I'm gonna get back to this because we're gonna fix this on the way. So in some ways what we need are two different login actions. We need one that has just the type field and one that when the type field is field, 
it has these two additional properties. You can do that with TypeScript. So let's actually do that. You can do type login action equals uh, type of string, or if the type of string is field, then it has the field name as a string and payload as a string. So this mostly works for the most part, but there's still some confusion here because this type of string includes everything, but we actually just want it to be for these known type values, login success, error, and logout. So of course what you could do is you could say type of login, that's fine. You could say uh, type of success, right? So just name all the different objects that you can do. But what's really neat about TypeScript is you can use, again, a discriminated union and say this type field can be either login, success, error, or log out so that when there is an object being given that has a type field of just these strings, then there should be no other properties. When the type is field, then it needs to have those properties. And if you look here, no red squigglies, nothing is complaining. Everything is happy. And we have a fully typed TypeScript. We have a fully typed reducer function that's being used with use reducer. So there's no chance of us accidentally saying uh, login typo, right? That's gonna be complaining because it has to be one of these string values. If I accidentally add a payload here erroneously, it's gonna complain because it's saying that login cannot have the payload property, does not exist in type this. Everything is nice and safe and TypeScript. Hopefully that made sense. I find explaining TypeScript very, very, very hard. It is a very, it's the most technical of all the things that I describe, and it's a whole different world. And I find it very difficult to make digestible in this form. So hopefully that made sense. Let me know what's still confusing in the comments below. I will happily jump in and reply with clarifications. That's the video for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you're not a subscriber, become one. More videos like this happen every week. Uh, thank you, and I will see you again next week.